Well, another train's passed through Adelstrop Station. In fact, they all pass through nowadays. For one good reason, there's no station there anymore. But there was a station once. And because there was a station there, Adelstrop became famous throughout the English-speaking world. One day, a train did stop, and on it was the poet Edward Thomas. And as a result of what he saw during the minute the train stopped and the things he heard, he wrote a poem, Yes, I Remember Adelstrop. That poem passed into books like these, a book of verse for boys and girls, Palgrave's Golden Treasury, and it must have been learned by millions of children the world over. Yes, I remember Adelstrop, the name, because one afternoon of heat the express train drew up there unwantedly. It was late June. The steam hissed. Someone cleared his throat. No one left and no one came on the bare platform. What I saw was Adelstrop, only a name, and willows, willow herb and grass, and meadow sweet and haycocks dry, no whit less still and lonely fair than the high cloudlets in the sky. And for that minute a blackbird sang close by, and round him, mistier, farther and farther, all the birds of Oxfordshire and Gloucestershire. Late June. Well, it certainly isn't the late June that Edward Thomas knew. It's no afternoon of heat, that's for sure. But lots of things in Adelstrop haven't changed since that day. In fact, hardly at all. And one of the people who remembers it all as it was then is Miss Louisa Gardner. She was a little girl living at the end of the station drive when Thomas's train drew up there unwantedly. What would you think the train was that he was traveling on? Well, what we in our language then would say the 20 to 4 down, but of course it was the express from Paddington to Worcester. And I bet you even knew the guard on it. Oh, yes, yes, we did. did. You? Yes, guard Bartlett. And they called the train the Bartlett, I think. Yes, the Bartlett train. So Edward Thomas probably travelled on the Bartlett? On day to day. What has the passing of the railway meant to Adelstrop? The village has lost something, its life has lost something? Well, it's one of the passing of the old things that you're so used to, especially me myself, mm. that, uh, I mean, you, it is a loss, really. But people nowadays have got cars, I mean, they don't miss it for travelling around so much. But the it's way just the yeah. feeling that it's gone, that it's... Uh, well, to me, it's heartbreaking in a way. How are you going to convince people that this is a good thing or that it's got to be done? Well, the plain fact is, of course, that as far as we're concerned, those stations are completely uneconomic. They give us no money at all. If we are to be viable as a railway, and that's Dr. Beeching's plan, and to avoid our deficits, those stations have got to go. At the end of 66, beginning then, they will get a really fine service, probably the best in the country, between the major cities, and that is what counts. Alternatives uh, for the shorter journey, of course, will be provided by the bus companies. Do you think the buses are up to this? Oh, well, they can be made to be up to it, and in fact, in many cases, I'm quite sure they can take over the load that we are carrying. I don't know why British Railways bother to make a timetable. They never keep on time. Oh, I'm fed up with these railways. I wish they'd do something about it. The trouble is that trains are so empty that we are subsidising by paying a lot the people who do travel on them. The engines are not working some of the time, they break down. Well, the seats are terribly dirty and the carriages are dirty. And by the time the train arrives, it, it's cold and it's damp and it, it's just not an enjoyable journey at all, you know? The service is terrible and I'm absolutely fed up with the whole thing.
Will it be a very great hardship to people in East Leek if the line is closed? There is a bus service, but it takes a very much longer time to get to Nottingham. Uh, in extremely bad weather, such as we've had this last month, uh, bus services are very tricky things to run. And uh, there is a matter of cost. Railways are a little cheaper. My own two daughters go into Nottingham every day, and they would regard it as a very great inconvenience if they had to go by bus. Mrs Langham, you and your family live here in East Leek. What do you think of the proposal to close down your railway station? Well, I don't think much of it, really. It's, we shall miss the trains if they do close. Mm -hmm. Is it going to inconvenience you very much? Yes, a great deal. I do all my shopping in Nottingham. Go by train, I go to Leicester quite a bit. And it'll take... Well, I don't know how I shall get to Leicester without the train. What about the rest of the villagers? Well, a lot of people use the trains regularly for work. Mm -hmm. School children use it. Is there any other means of transport? Well, there are buses, but they took, I think, more than twice as long to Nottingham. Uh, they're cold and uncomfortable. Good evening. We've come over to Derby on the viewing day of a sale of railway relics and old station equipment. It's housed here in a warehouse on these riverside sidings here at Derby. It's a warehouse that was used originally, I think, by the London Midland Railway as a signal fitting shop and is now a good home for this somewhat unique sale. There are over a, a thousand items for sale here, ranging from station signs, to whistles from locos, station clocks, and wheelbarrows. Now, most of us must at some time or other have sat in the waiting room, patiently awaiting the arrival of a train, looking round at the traditional railway furnishings. The inevitable picture of some far distant tourist attraction, aimed to whet our appetite and encourage further travel. The station clock, so tenderly and accurately kept by the porter, having first checked it by his fob watch. 
The familiar double thump as the clerk dates your stout card ticket. The seats themselves are now collector's pieces because they so proudly bear the carved initials of the now extinct railway companies. The GCR, the Great Central Railway, that ran from Sheffield, Manchester, Nottingham, Loughborough, Leicester and Rugby to Marylebone. A rare chair indeed inscribed L and B, the old London and Birmingham, forerunner of the London North Western Railway. This chair must be over 100 years old. And then, of course, the Midland Railway, which had its headquarters here in Derby. All these grand old companies now form part of the British Railways. The porter tells us of the arrival of the train and goes out onto the platform with his hand lamp, always clean, always lit. Once outside, we are accosted by a battery of signs and notices, extolling us to go this way and that from here to there. The station itself, lit by tall lamp standards containing funneled paraffin lamps, ought to be very modern gas. These would look good in the modern garden. The train arrives with the locomotive proudly bearing her name of a town, country, or some dignitary. Also, for the true train spotter, the means of identification, a number, keenly sought. This is the branch line from Stratford-on-Avon to Fenny Compton, and on March the 1st this year, it closed under the Beeching Act. Since that date, no train has run across these rails, not even a little tiny local goods train. The whole area is completely deserted, well this you'd expect from a closed railway line. But there's one strange fact, and that is that there are still quite a large number of staff working on this particular section. There's signalmen, two at Kyneton here and two at Clifford Sidings. They man their boxes 24 hours a day and still test and operate the equipment, but for no trains. Well, this is a very strange setup. What is even stranger, at Clifford Sidings, they have a very bad life because um, they don't have any water to make the tea. So every day from Stratford and Avon, a shunting engine goes up to Clifford Sidings and takes them a can of water. Yet the line closed on March the 1st. Well, one of these signalmen is Mr Ashfield. So let's try and find out just exactly what he does with all his spare time. Mr Ashfield, if I can interrupt you for a moment, is that a good book? It is a good book. Don't you get bored just sitting here doing nothing? Well, I do get bored, but uh, in between uh, every hour or two testing the equipment, a bit of reading, making a cup of tea. That's what we've been at the last week of ten days. Well, when did you have the last train down here? Well, actually, the last train run on uh, the end of February, but I have had a weed-killing train up this week on Wednesday. Well, this must have been quite a thrill for you. Well, it was, yeah. When do you expect your next train? Is there going to be a next train? Well, I couldn't tell you whether there's going to be another train at all. Mm -hmm. But, uh, as I say, apart from uh, testing the equipment, the bowels and everything, every hour or two, well, you've got to read or make tea. But surely it gets very lonely during the night, doesn't it? Oh, it does through the night, yeah. And how long a stint do you do here? Twelve hours Twelve on? Twelve hours, from tea time at night till six o'clock in the next morning. Coventry, a new city with a new station that is going to provide new comforts and new services that belong to our streamlined industrial age. Most people who travel between the Midlands and London will remember the old station and it wasn't exactly an ancient monument. Here I met the original architect responsible for the design of the new station, Mr. Bill Headley. Apart from the new look, what other interesting features have you introduced here at Coventry? Well, we've tried to plan this station uh, on a, a good functional basis. We've uh, got quite a large area of space outside the station, which uh, has been assisted by the local authority, the city authorities, replanning the area outside. In this way we've been able to extend the concourse outwards and concentrate the passenger facilities on the right and the parcels and GPO facilities on the left. This means that when you come to the station parcels and passengers won't meet. There'll be good setting down facilities for cars and taxis. People arriving by bus will arrive at the front of the station and be able to walk direct in. This is quite a good thing because the station being quite a long way from the road, 
it means that people, as they go to the main platforms, will be able to do their inquiries, book their seats, uh, get their tickets, all on the way through, instead of coming to a flat building where they come to a halt and do all these things and then get onto the platforms afterwards. New Street Station in Birmingham has a proud record of service to the travelling public, but in a modern railway system, it had to go. The station facilities were bad because they were too old. The modern electric train has 13 coaches, and the old station had only one platform big enough to take such a train. Already work on the new Euston and Manchester Piccadilly stations is complete, but the new street plan is the most comprehensive of them all. Before development, there were eight through platforms on the station and six bays. Not enough. As the demolition progressed, old landmarks disappeared and new views of the city took their place. The final station will blend with the modern city, with a railway at ground level and a new shopping precinct on the seven and a half acre precess platform covering the station and tracks. From the day work started, the station has continued to serve the public, often under great difficulty to finally achieve a new concept in station design. New Street, Birmingham, March 1967. In hard cash, the new station cost four and a half million pounds. The new entrance and the new concourse with full facilities for all passengers. The new ticket office with its eight windows is now fully automated. Gone are the days of fumbling for a ticket. Here you can obtain a ticket printed on the spot to any destination you may require. All the traditional passenger amenities are centralised on the upper concourse. Bookstalls, refreshment and waiting rooms, as well as telephone kiosks and information stands. In a few years' time, New Street will be part of the busiest line in the world. The design copes with this. Escalators to all parts of the station, though if you prefer you can walk. The commercial development plans for the level above the station include a shopping precinct, car park and an entertainment centre with bowling alley and restaurants. At 7.25 this morning, the first mainline express, a businessman's special, left New Street on its way to Euston. The new railway has begun. As the new line starts, an old line dies. The service from Paddington via Birmingham Snow Hill to Birkenhead. Time. Yes, oh yes, we're keeping good time. Good, but we won't hold you up too long. Just to no. ask you, what do you think about this change over to diesel? Well, uh, I think they're doing the right thing. I mean, to say, uh, as far as we're concerned, it's a better job for us. It's a cleaner job, and uh, the trains will be able to run quicker. You can uh, get along faster with the diesel than what you can with the steam. And they're easier to drive, presumably, are they? Beb Easier to drive? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they're easy enough to drive with diesel, right? 
How long and you... more skilly driving these than what there is with the diesels when it comes to that. How long have you been driving these big steam locomotives? Well, I've been on this run for three years, but I've been driving them on and off now for between 10 and 15 years. And don't you get attached to the old engine? Oh, yes, we do get attached to them. We don't like losing them. But we know it's got to come and we've got to make the best of it, that's all. And every schoolboy is probably going to be upset too, isn't it? Yes, they are. There's no doubt about it. We've got plenty of those. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very oh, much. Yes. And yes. a good journey. Yes, we well, are. This really is a train spotter's dream come true. Name, Lion, pedigree, thoroughbred, class 042, and vintage 1838. Veteran performer in several films, including the title role in the Titchfield Thunderbolt. Strange to think that she was once relegated to driving a pumping engine for the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board. Now the property of the Liverpool Engineering Society, Lion here is a, a splendid memorial to the skill that made our early railways. Still there are many years to catch up with between 1838 and 1961, so I'm in a hurry.